In the last part of the series, part 42, we saw the events of the crucifixion of the Messiah, Yahshua. We saw as he was betrayed with a kiss by Judas. We saw as the chief priests and Pharisees sought false testimony of him and sought out to Pilate to crucify him. We saw how the Jews placed his blood on their hands and the blood of their children. And we lastly saw him crucified. This was a very difficult episode to make because as it was being created, I felt so much sadness for our king. When you really think about what he had to endure for us and how his people treated him, it really breaks your heart. But I was always comforted because that was not the end of the story, hallelujah. What happens next is even more important. So let's just get right into it. Let's begin. Yahshua had just given his last breath. Therefore, because it was the preparation day, that the body should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day. The Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who was crucified with him. But when they came to Yahshua and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water came out. And he who has seen has testified and his testimony is true. And he knows that he is telling the truth so that you may believe. For these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled. Not one of his bones shall be broken. And again, another scripture says, they shall look on him whom they pierced. Now when evening had come, because it was the preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent council member who was himself waiting for the kingdom of Elohim, came and boldly went into Pilate and asked for the body of Yahshua. Pilate marveled that he was already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him if he had been dead. So when he found out from the centurion, he granted the body to Joseph. So he came and took the body of Yahshua, and Nicodemus, who at first came to Yahshua by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds. Then they took the body of Yahshua and bowed it into strips of linen with the spices, as the custom of the Jews is to bury. And he laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of the rock, and rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. And Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, observed where he was laid. On the next day, which followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees gathered together to Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember, while he was still alive, how that deceiver said, After three days I will rise. Therefore, command that the tomb be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away, and say to the people, He has risen from the dead. So the last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard, go your way. Make it as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure, sealing the stone and setting the guard. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Adon descended from heaven, and came and rolled back the stone from the door, and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him, and became like dead men. Now Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early, while it was still dark, saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple, whom Yahshua loved, and said to them, They had taken away the Adon out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out, and the other disciple, and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together, and the other disciple outran Peter, and came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen cloths lying there, yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen cloths lying there, and the cloth that had been around his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own homes. But Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting, 
one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Yahshua had lain. Then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away Adonai, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Yahshua standing there, and did not know that it was Yahshua. Yahshua said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Yahshua said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabbani, which is to say teacher. Yahshua said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father and to my Elohim and your Elohim. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Adun and that he had spoken these things to her. Now while they were going, behold, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priests all the things that had happened. When they had assembled with the elders and consulted together, they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers, saying, Tell them his disciples came at night and stole him away while we slept. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will appease him and make you secure. So they took the money and did as they were instructed. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. Liars. So Yahshua has resurrected. He conquered death. The resurrection is another sign that Yahshua is the Messiah, the son of Elohim. The resurrection also validates all the other times Yahshua prophesied of this happening. Like in Matthew chapter 16 verse 21. Or also in Matthew chapter 17 verses 22 and 23. Or again in chapter 20 verses 17 through 19. The Apostle Paul in his writings to the Corinthians emphasizes the importance of the resurrection in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. This chapter must be read in its entirety. The resurrection of the Messiah is an integral part of the faith. This miracle is an essential part of the gospel message. Yes, the Messiah died, but more importantly, he has been raised from death. He's not only a suffering servant, but a living savior. Now the Pharisees attempted to cover this up, but it was really a weak excuse. They wanted to say that the soldiers fell asleep and the disciples came and stole him. This was extremely weak because by Roman law, if a guard was found sleeping at his post or if a prisoner escaped, the guard would be put to death. We see evidence of that a few times in scripture in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 12 verse 19 says, But when Herod had searched for him and not found him, he examined the guards and commanded that they should be put to death. Or Acts chapter 16 verses 27 and 28 say, and the keeper of the prison, awaking from sleep and seeing the prison door open, supposing the prisoner had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called with a loud voice saying, Do yourself no harm, for we are all here. So if a prisoner truly escaped, they would see death. This is why the Pharisees told them that if it came to the governor, they would secure them. So that lie that they tried to spread was extremely weak. Plus, sleeping people do not make good witnesses. If they were asleep, how would they know what happened? These lies obviously did not hold, but just show just how wicked the chief priests and Pharisees were. Let's continue. Now behold, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem, and they talked together of all these things which had happened. So it was, while they conversed and reasoned, that Yahshua himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained, so that they did not know him. And he said to them, What kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? Then the one whose name was Cleophas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? Have you not known the things which happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? So they said to him, The things concerning Yahshua of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before Elohim and all the people and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, and a certain woman of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us when they did not find his body. 
they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but him they did not see. Then he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would have gone farther. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. And they said to one another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road, and while he opened the scriptures to us? So they rose up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem, and found the eleven, and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Adon is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they told about the things that had happened on the road, and how he was known to them, and the breaking of the bread. Now as they said these things, Yahshua himself stood in the midst of them, and said to them, Peace to you. But they were terrified and frightened, and supposed they had seen a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. But while they still did not believe for joy and marveled, he said to them, Have you any food here? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Messiah to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you receive the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas, called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Yahshua came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Adun. So he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and put my hands into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them. Yahshua came, the doors being shut, and stood in the mist, and said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here, and look at my hands, and reach your hands here, and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, Adonai, and my Elohim. Yahshua said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And truly Yahshua did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Yahshua is the Messiah, the son of Elohim, and that believing you may have life in his name. Thomas is like many today. They won't believe it until they see it firsthand. Thomas was blessed because he was able to see it firsthand with his own eyes. He even felt him. But Yahshua tells him that we are blessed because we have not seen and yet have believed. John wrote this book so that we know that Yahshua is the Messiah and the son of Elohim. Believe and you will have eternal life. Yahshua continued speaking saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, 
but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. And this is the Great Commission. All authority rests on Yahshua, because he has authority over all. Everyone needs to hear his gospel. We are to go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. If you have ever heard that salvation is only for Israel, please go directly back to these scriptures. Matthew chapter 28 verses 18 through 20 and Mark chapter 16 verses 15 through 18. He sent us into the world to teach of this good news. He who believes will be saved. He who doesn't believe will be condemned. Remember this and believe in salvation through Yahshua the Messiah. After these things, Yahshua showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and in this way he showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana, in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We are going with you also. They went out and immediately got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning had now come, Yahshua stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Yahshua. Then Yahshua said to them, Children, have you any food? They answered him, No. And he said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast, and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Therefore that disciple whom Yahshua loved said to Peter, It is the Adun! Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Adun, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it, and plunged into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from land, but about two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fish. Then as soon as they had come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid on it, and bread. Yahshua said to them, Bring some of the fish which you have just caught. Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to land, full of large fish, one hundred and fifty-three. And although there are so many, the net was not broken. Yahshua said to them, Come and eat breakfast. Yet none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? Knowing that it was the Adun, Yahshua then came and took the bread and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. This is now the third time Yahshua showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. So when they had eaten breakfast, Yahshua said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Adonai, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Adonai, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Adonai, you know all things. You know that I love you. Yahshua said to him, Feed my sheep. Most assuredly, I say to you, When you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands, and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke, signifying by what death he will glorify Elohim. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, Follow me. In this part, we see the restoration of Peter. In the last part, we saw Peter deny Yahshua three times, just as Yahshua prophesied earlier. Yahshua asked him three times if he loved him and gave him duties to fulfill each time. Yahshua gave him the task of feeding his lambs and taking care of his sheep. You see, expressing love for the Messiah is not about saying it in words but also in your heart, which is shown through your actions. Expressing love for him implies accepting a duty to the work of Elohim and to be faithful. Peter had difficulty with this faithfulness. As Joshua was getting ready to depart, he won a commitment from Peter, which Peter gave and assured the others of the bond between Peter and Joshua, demonstrating Joshua's forgiveness of Peter. Peter was restored to a position of leadership in the ongoing ministry of the gospel. It was also prophesied that he would suffer for it as well. 
This expectation is not isolated to only Peter. Don't get so comfortable in church today without having the expectation of sacrifice. The same persecution may come to you, and you must make sure you are committed to Yahshua the same way and learn from Peter's mistakes. Now, when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Yahshua, who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. And this is the gospel, the good news. All are saved through this. If you confess with your mouth that Yahshua is Adon, your master, and believe in your heart that Elohim raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Messiah died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, so that we can be justified through him to the Father. For the grace of Elohim has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age. We live through him now, and become imitators of him. Yes, we must forsake the ways, traditions, and patterns of this world. This is not a religion, but a way of life. This is freedom. The world is bondage, and now more than ever. It is easier to see more than ever that the world has trapped the majority in spiritual chains and mental yokes. As a majority, the world denounces physical slavery as they go deeper into their bonds of mental slavery. Faith and belief in the Messiah are the only way to loosen these chains. And this is a huge benefit we obtain in our present lives, along with having peace that he only can give, having love even though everyone else doesn't know how to show it, along with joy and peace even though the world around you is shattering. This is life in abundance, and you know for sure there will always be someone there for you. That's your benefit while living in this present age. But even more than that, you have the blessed hope. This is what we are waiting for. One day we will all be judged, and those who have lived through him will be justified to the Father through Yahshua. We are redeemed through him. Your name will be written in the book of life. Everyone not found in the book of life will be thrown into the lake of fire. This is the condemnation. It's very easy to live today and pay this no mind because the world has placed many distractions in front of us that have taken priority in people's lives instead. But these distractions do not stop this from happening. It only distracts many from doing something about it. If you are watching this, you have been called to commit your life to the Father. Believe in Yahshua and live through all he has said. Ensure your name is written in the book of life. There is nothing more important. And make sure you live like you know this as well. Ignorance and distractions will never be an accepted excuse. So don't let it be a factor. Live through Yahshua and forsake the ways, traditions, and patterns of this world. For those that have already done so, continue to grow your relationship and strengthen yourself in things you're weak on. Grow in love and be patient. Redemption is nigh, and you must continue to trust in him. We will all be redeemed soon, so continue to guard yourself and be led by the Holy Spirit. Continue to go out and preach the good news, even though it seems others are not listening. Continue to protect your children from evil and raise them through the strictness of the word. Continue to grow in knowledge and discernment and look for the traps that Satan is laying for you. If you have watched this series from part one through this current one, part 43, you have been presented with a presentation of the scriptures that has led you to the good news. This is the good news that will bring you redemption. So please live through it. This series is not done though. This is the history of religion and we have many more things to go over, but the gospel is always the priority to me. So now that it is covered, we will now go into the creation of the church that is told through the book of Acts, and then we will cover the Roman Catholic Church, Islam, Mormonism, Jehovah Witnesses, etc. So please stay tuned. But you have been presented with the gospel of Yahshua HaMashiach, the Messiah. Receive your salvation through him today. Okay, thanks again everybody for watching. If this has blessed you, please do not forget to like it and share it with others. If you have not already done so, do not forget to subscribe to this channel. I upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram. As always, I'd like to thank all who support this ministry. 
Your contributions truly bless this ministry. I am always humbled by your support. Thank you for your obedience to Yahweh's call on your heart. I'm so thankful for him and you. Be blessed. Okay, thanks again everyone for watching. I love you all.